Good evening everybody! Today we're back for another trip to Buckethead Land to take a look at Pike 242 Hamden's Hollow. So let's begin. Woo! Released December 12, 2016, Pike 242 was the third of four Pike albums released that month, recorded after the completion of Buckethead's six-month North American tour, with the cover art seeing a return for longtime collaborator Frank and Seuss. The 11-track album kicks off with the two-minute section one, super shred licks intertwined with heavy riffage. There's no doubt about the fantastic skill on display, but at just two minutes in length, it's in and out without really setting the world on fire. Section 2 is far more engaging than the previous track, leading with more heavy ribbage and feels far more structured and thought out, ending with more crazy shred nubbin. Job done. Section 3 has an excellent groove early on, complemented by its drums, there's some glorious sweeping around the 1 minute mark and more enjoyable rock rippage. Buckethead's in the zone. Section 4 is the album's shortest track at just under 2 minutes and it's all controlled chaos, with Buckethead seemingly shredding on a semi-acoustic for sections of the song and is more excellent but brief sweeping, again in and out. Section 5 is the most ferocious track yet, with Buckethead delivering his fastest shred lick so far. Whilst Buckethead shredding isn't for everyone, when it's done right with a structured backing track, riffs and pacing, it works excellently. <laughs> Section 6 again has more excellent riffage and the shred licks are truly mind blowing. Again this structure and the drums are excellent. This isn't just shred for the sake of shred, this is shred done right. Section 7 leads with heavy funk orientated riffage and of course the shred continues. The pacing is excellent and it locks you in the entire time. Just like the previous two tracks, this is an album standout. Shred on.
Section 8 again delivers more of the same and that isn't a bad thing. It's another solid Riff vs Shred trade off and it delivers. It's not as strong as the previous three tracks but still enjoyable. Section 9 doesn't quite connect as well as previous tracks early on, but picks things up later in the track with a nice ending solo. Two minutes, in and out, not bad. Section 10 is the album's longest track at three and a half minutes. It's not as heavy on its shred licks, instead leading with more outstanding heavy riffs. Another enjoyable track with great progression. concludes with section 11 and how else could this album possibly end but with crazy shred licks. Big B gets the shred out of his system and of course throws more excellent rivage in there too. Solid end. Pike 242 might be a quote unquote shred album, which I'm personally not a huge fan of shred and on occasions can become quite tiresome, but this is shred done right, in the right places at the right time mixed in with outstanding and heavily underrated rips. The album does get off to an up and down start, but really kicks into gear from section 5 onwards. Even if you're not a fan of shred guitar, I'd highly recommend this album as it might be the one buckethead shred album that could change your mind. After adding up the rating I gave for each track, it came to 62%, which I categorise as good. And considering it's an 11 track album, that is pretty good. You can find my individual song ratings and breakdown on our website, natanet.com. So what's your rating for Pike 242? Be sure to let us know.